was 18 and I decided to, I took the Good Food Guide and I wrote to the top 30 restaurants of the Good Food Guide, any chance of coming and doing, you know, for a job, basically. And I think I got like three letters back. Obviously in those days there wasn't any staff shortages. Um, one of them was from a guy called Raymond Blanc, who had a restaurant called The Memoir. Cat says on was two Michelin stars, it was the best restaurant in the country at the time. So he asked me to come and do, <clears throat> I did it like a week, 10 days there. And I turned up and it was a mountain of beans, boxes and boxes and boxes of green beans, and that's what I did. So I topped and tailed and topped and tailed them. Funny enough, I don't know if that was a subliminal kind of message, but when it did open the duck, um, several years later, 10 years or so later, the green beans was one of the big things that, that it became almost like a leap motif for what I was doing because we had domestic gas pressure so the ovens were it's an old pub really weak <clears throat> the gas power was really weak so I had a box of green beans to do and you, when you throw the beans in you want the water to stay, to, to stay boiling but what happened is if I threw any more than sort of a bunch like that thick into the water the water would come off the boil and it would just sit it would just sit and almost sweat in this water so I was doing about four to eight beans at a time. So one box of green beans took all day. <laughs> but what it did do, again, question everything, maybe the whole thing about why this green veg, salt in the water, the green veg. Um, and I got quite obsessed about that and realised that um, there's an awful lot of nonsense written about this stuff. <clears throat> sometimes it's better to put salt in and sometimes not, so you're safer if you just put it in. But lid on the pan is another classic thing in the kitchen, never put the lid on the pan when you're cooking green vegetables because of this colour, that's the biggest load of rubbish. Um, what I reckon what probably happened is somewhere in the past, some young chef kept on forgetting that there were beans in the pan because the lid was on. So you got told never put the lid on the pan. What it was really saying was, you know, that way you, you won't forget them. But in fact, the lid on the pan is better. You want the water, cellulose doesn't break down until 82 to 85 degrees centigrade and you need to break the cellulose down in, in green veg in order to release some of the sweetness and get, remove some of the bitter compounds. So you need to get it up to that temperature, cook it quickly enough to keep the colour, but enough to soften the beans to drive the sweetness. So <clears throat> big pet hate of mine is you wouldn't eat haricot vert raw. You wouldn't just go and eat it just, I mean, you could do, but they're not particularly enjoyable. So why have them warm and raw? Yeah, people just don't cook them enough. Anyway, I went off to ramble on green beans. Between, between those two boxes of green beans was about 10 years. Um, and I decided after the memoir, he offered me a job. And for some reason, I just, I'd started this self, kind of self-educational um, process on, for, for cooking and, lo and loved it and was just immersed in it. And I thought at the time, I saw some people that had been there, been doing what they'd been doing for five years, six years, seven years, and I thought, I don't know if I've got that patience. So <coughs> I decided, I thought, I'll go and do some other jobs. And I earned myself a fortune and then opened a restaurant. Well, I realised, one, I wasn't very good at much else. And secondly, I wasn't driven by money. And um, the jobs that I could get certainly weren't going to net me enough money to even do, get a little restaurant. So um, I did debt collecting sold office equipment, real glamorous stuff. <laughs> uh, and then eventually, I worked for my, went to work for my dad, he had a leasing company, and I did basic accounting, so I was a bookkeeper. Every day, half past three, I was like that. Every day, eight hours, nine hours a day, half three, every single day, I was exhausted. Um, I was exercising a lot, but I think some of that was just out of the, to release some <laughs> energy that I hadn't expended during the day. Um, and then, funny enough, going, you know, when I started working at the Duck, doing, I was working 20 hours a day. Um, sometimes 21, 22 hours. Never, never knew those levels of exhaustion could exist. However, the days went quicker. There was never enough time. I was never bored. Um, and so that office, that kind of office job for me wasn't, wasn't, wasn't right. So I had a small cottage, flogged the cottage, borrowed some money from my old man, and that was it. 
so had bought the fat duck and the fat duck was a, it was and still is a small very small cottage but I did what they're not I am not many I've seen other chefs of their careers that they've moved up quicker <clears throat> but I sacrificed everything so just, that was it no house in fact that was was my house which actually turned out to be that way for the first few years because I was sleeping on the laundry upstairs <laughs> so I opened the fat duck in 95 1997 was looking back at it, a fairly defining moment in terms of with cooking and in particular one dish I've been working on ice cream it was the first area that I kind of looked into the science of it because I just found it <clears throat> If you took 10, 15 chef's cookbooks for vanilla ice cream, yeah, they'd all have vanilla in. Some of them whole eggs, some of them egg yolks, some use sugar, some honey, some would use mascarpone cream, double cream, single cream, whipping cream, milk, etc., etc., etc. And I was kind of thinking, why on earth are these recipes, do they differ in the way they, they do? Is it because that's just the way that they've been taught? Or do these ingredients play a role that extends further than the taste? So I started looking into, into the science of ice cream making and realised it really comes down to things like, you know, if you, you, put a, you put a glass of water in the freezer, it freezes into a solid block. When you start putting things in the water, you change the freezing point and, it, and then it becomes softer. So alcohol and sugar and stuff like that, the total solids make a difference. And with ice cream, you churn. So the churning spreads the ice crystals around quicker as it churns. The smaller the ice crystals, the smoother the ice cream. So those rolls, if you don't put sugar in an ice cream, you don't end up with a, you, you don't get the smooth texture. But if you put too much, it becomes chewy. <clears throat> and I found a recipe for a Sicilian recipe, 1850, 1870, for Parmesan ice cream. And I thought, oh, seems a bit weird. And then I started thinking, why should it be weird? It's just because we're used to ice cream being sweet. So <clears throat> I started playing around with savoury ices. And I made a crab risotto. <clears throat> with had a sheet of passion fruit jelly, a reduction of red pepper, castanada red pepper, a um, bunch of other stuff, and then a uh, crab, somewhere between an ice cream and sorbet. And it's crab stock, a bit of milk powder, a little bit of cream, and you churned it. And the idea was that these different characteristics of crab, there's a crab oil on there as well, but uh, this hot and cold thing. Anyway, some people loved it, and some people couldn't get their head around it. And I found that if I, if I gave them a spoonful of, of, of it and said, taste this, it, it's, cr it's crab ice cream, you get one reaction. If you say, taste this, it's a frozen crab bisque. Ah, that's it. It actually led to my first paper. We did it with Sussex University on, on smoked salmon ice cream and smoked, frozen smoked salmon mousse. And people thought that when you called it smoked salmon ice cream, the perceived saltiness went up. Because of what your expectations are of something, of something sweet. <clears throat> so relatively speaking, it seemed more salty.